Knowing yourself, my wife has entered into a relationship with another man. Nothing physical, just emotional, which is bad enough. It started as providing support for each other as they both deal with their own marriage issues. But she has revealed to me at least one of them has feeling for the other, at least her, and I assume him as well since she is attractive and much younger. A quick backstory, I suffer from what you would call a flat effect at times. I'm a great husband, but I have historically been emotionally unavailable. I listen well, but I don't share my own feelings very often. I never express my wants and needs and live my life around my wife and kids. In addition, I have rarely told her how attractive she is to me, what passion I have for her, how I crave her touch. She felt that I just didn't care about her and that we were like roommates. This has caused great loneliness in my wife and she craves that emotional connection. She is tired of telling me what to do and wants me to speak for myself. We started therapy a year ago and around four to six months ago, she stopped enabling me. I've been dealing with my issues, with medication, not therapy yet, and I have improved a lot, but I'm still not where she needs me to be. It wasn't until she revealed the depth of her relationship with him and threatened to leave me that I woke up. Anger really opened me up and I have been very present, free-flowing with emotions. A different man, constantly craving her and expressing it. Unfortunately, she can't forget the past 8 to 10 years where I wasn't there. She checked out of our marriage months ago and is really struggling to reconnect with me, even though she still loves me more than anything. She just doesn't believe we are in love. With that said, I understand her need to connect with someone, but we both admit this relationship is inappropriate. She just isn't willing to give it up or give us up. But I can't stand being in limbo. I would be devastated if we separated. I'm extremely jealous and possessive, internally. I couldn't stand her leaving me or being with someone else. I expressed how hurt I was and asked her to stop meeting with him. I was okay with texting, phone, but after speaking with our therapist, they suggested either we separate or the relationship ends. It was too hard, confusion for both of us. My wife was forced into making a decision she wasn't ready to make and after a few days of real pain, she relented and agreed not to be in contact with him. I told her I trusted her decision and would stop spying on her cell phone records, and she told me about two occasions where the spoke strictly platonically about an issue he was having. The past 10 days since that decision have been awful. She is in a really bad place. I have been awake for around a month and it almost seems like we have switched roles. She's unavailable and I'm trying my best to reconnect. I have been giving her space and she has taken it every few days. The first time was tough. I questioned where she was the entire time, because she is usually texting me a lot and was silent this day, but I didn't spy on her. I had a tough time and expressed my jealousy when she returned and we had a good talk. After a hard day with the kids yesterday, I she went out again, this time for 8 to 10 hours. Again, I trusted her and didn't spy. Until today. Well, today it was too much for me. She has been so distant and I'm so frustrated. I checked the cell history and lo and behold, she has been in almost constant communication with him. Even last night when she was out with her friend, which she was, they were texting the entire time. And before going out, there was almost three hours of talk as well. What am I to do? Do I confront her and reveal I betrayed he trust? What if they are truly just support for one another, helping each other through really tough times in their respective marriages? If I reveal I was spying again, I will make things harder for my wife and me. Of course, I'm almost sick with jealousy so where do my feelings come into play? I don't know what to do. I still love her and I'm working my back off to win her back. She is just so disconnected and confused right now. Do I sit on this info and see where we go? I just felt like both sides need to have a word. If I just expressed my side, no one would understand where my wife is at. I think I will just straight up ask her about this week and not offer that I know. We will see where that goes and hopefully, she opens up. I have a hard time going to the extreme and kicking her out, or at least going through the motions. I love her and I'm working hard to be a more complete person. For me and for us, I couldn't stand to be without her. Yes, the word codependency does ring a bell. I'm the one who keeps punching back when she suggests a separation. Very conflicted as this does nothing but hurt me. I agree that we can't foster an emotional connection while this continues. If she truly wants us to work, she has break it off. She definitely seems to be leaning more towards rug sweeping versus genuine R. It's difficult being the passive person. It takes me time to reflect on my thoughts and I often lose arguments. Maybe I'm not challenging her enough to see the true remorse and get a better sense that she wants to reconcile. I definitely need to stand up for myself and insist on transparency. I have that right. Well, it didn't go as well as planned. I really have no idea where we are at. This is part of my issue. Lack of emotional intelligence if you will. I'm hurt over this person, but really, he doesn't even matter. She's leaving me because I have no identity. I have no sense of self. Maybe I've showed up emotionally lately, but I left her alone, emotionally, for eight years. If we are going to work, I need to fix me. I have a lot of issues. I'm a great husband and father, no doubt, but I have to figure out who I am before we can be together. Maybe if I say it out loud, I'll believe it. From here the only option is a separation. 
Until I prove I'm getting better, there can't be an us. That is devastating to me. I don't want this. It's not my choice. But she's done feeling like she has to nag me to take care of important things. She doesn't want to be that person anymore. I have to prove to her I can make it without her for her to want to make us work again. She's done feeling empty and alone. This was never about him. He's complicating things, sure, but it's about her and I and us. I've been way too focused on him when I need to get back to me. I don't even know if I'm explaining it right. I think as much as it hurts the only way I can save us is to work on me getting better. I just pray she doesn't do something stupid before we get to the point where we even have a chance to reconcile. While I love her more than anything, I don't know if I could forgive that. Even though we are separated, I still feel like we have to stay faithful. I'm going to have to get over that if this is for real. I just can't even imagine the thought of being with someone else. I'm still in love. I know I'm sounding like the typical victim here, but I really do have a false sense of where we are at. First off, she has suggested the separation several times but my fear of losing her has me resisting it. Giving her an ultimatum won't do anything. She wants to have space and I'm the one fighting to stay together. Fact of the matter is we have never truly emotionally connected. At least, not to the extent that she needs me to be connected. As I explained, I have a hard time with emotions. Google Alexithymia to get an idea of how I have behaved during our relationship. Not that I have that condition, but something in my past makes me behave similarly. Until recently, putting feelings into words has been painfully tough for me. With that, she has a point. Maybe I'm gaslighting her, trying to convince her that my recollection of the part is the real one. Another issue I have is with memory. Man, I sound like a winner. Just kidding. I'm trying not to be self-deprecating. I don't trust my memories since they are always foggy at best. I agree that this EA cannot continue if we are going to save our marriage. I gave express that and asked for it to end. Her view is that she's not ready to commit to fixing us. There is too much pain and resentment. She's not ready to give up on us but can't commit either. A separation seems like trilby option here. I do fear this man now that we are about to enter a separation, but I feel exposing them will just cause a bigger rift between us. Further proof that I just don't understand the point of our issues and separation. It's easy to talk here in a vacuum, having you only hear my side, but in reality, our situation is more complex. I'm equally responsible for where we are at. She checked out of our marriage months ago, long before the EA, allowing herself to be okay with having an EA even if she hadn't made this connection. We would still be in the same place except that my emotions may still be suppressed. If anything, the EA and the anger and betrayal I felt brought out all of my emotions. Without it, I might still be as unavailable and we would be no better off I'm not saying it's a good thing. Hardly. But I think she resents the fact that it took another man for me to change. Like changing for her wasn't enough. For eight years I couldn't change for her, but now that I'm threatened, I can do it. I can see why she's frustrated. I'm equally frustrated. Where was I for eight years? Why do I feel like we were happier than we were? I feel like my only option is to heed her advice and seek help for me. In the meantime, I have to hope and pray that she realizes there was more to our relationship than she thinks and comes around to reconciling. I can't convince her that her feelings are wrong. She needs to come to that conclusion organically. If at all, I know I come across as stubborn and weak and a victim, but I'm trying to do what's best for my situation. I have read your replies and other threads and used the information that has resonated with me. I'm sorry if I seem stubborn for not following the program. I love my wife and neither of us wants to harm our three young children. Did I mention we were pregnant or nursing seven of those eight years? It's only recently my wife has been able to get her sense of self back, so it makes sense this past year, which include marriage counseling and me medicating my anxiety, we have had a lot of change and soul searching. Anyway, today we sent the kids out with Nana and had a long talk. It started out frustrating, but we eventually found peace and reached an agreement. The basics haven't changed. I need to work on my and she needs to work on her. That's obvious if we ever want to reconcile and make it. W, out this we will be back here eventually. We are going to live separated under the same roof. Mainly for the sake of our kids, but it feels right for us as well. Intimacy will be simple I love you, hugs, and brief good morning, goodbye kisses for now. I think I need to stay away from anything more intimate so that I don't get confused about where we are. If something happens, that does change where we are at until we communicate it with words and are both in agreement. We are both going to have appointments with separate therapists arranged at SAP. I have already called three and she has called some as well. I'm definitely looking forward to working though my issues and finding myself. I'm scared that I will fall back into my old habits of being disconnected because I won't have a partner to practice with, but I think I'm in a good place to start therapy and really get into my issues. She will remain in contact with her friend for now. If through therapy she reaches the decision to break it off, then that's great. If not, and her therapist helps her realize it's okay, then it is what it is. I don't have to like it, but she created the problem and it's on her to solve it. By whatever means are necessary. I'm not happy about this part of the arrangement, but she has assured me it's not a pot and if it ever approaches that, we will talk about it. I trust my wife. Outside of this adventure, we have never lied to each other. We are honest to a fault. 
I have to trust her and I know none of you will understand this. I know this won't sit well with most of you, but it is what feels right for me and my situation. I will keep you all updated as we progress. Two months later, we are halfway through a three-month separation, and I'm still trying to convince her to leave the arm so we can work on our thanks to therapy and self-help. I'm getting closer to accepting the reality of Plan B if we are still here in six weeks. I'm getting stronger and I will walk out if my needs aren't met. I'm working on me, reading self-help book to overcome my general fear of life. In addition, I have a therapist I see weekly. I feel like I'm doing everything I can and while I don't want to leave, I may have no choice. These days, my WS is spending a lot of time away from the house. Ignoring the time with the OM, she needs this to 1. Deal with the daily stressors of being a stay-at-home mom, get away from the three kids, and 2. To feel fulfilled, my interpretation. I fully support have a girl's night out or going to Starbucks for some peace. NC didn't work. She resented it and broke it. I didn't set clear boundaries or consequences. I was weak. I'm getting stronger. I fear the 180 because to her I will look like the emotionally distant husband that led her into the arms of the arm in the first place. I see that separation is the wrong description for where we are at. We are taking three months to rediscover our friendship, with bonding off the table. The hope is by rekindling our friendship, we will want to move towards our we have worked on a lot of things and are finding more time together. After the kids go to bed, sending the kids off to visit cousins, etc. We have a weekly date night as well where we get out. She is not willing to work on our marriage yet. To me this is plan of trying to get the WS to understand the pain she is causing. To decide on her own that the marriage is worth saving and take the first step toward R. Disconnecting with the OM at the end of three months. I will decide if I want to move into plan B which is where I separate myself from my WS. Maybe I misunderstand the MB plan. Perhaps we are already stuck in the limbo of cake eating and I am enabling it. I am not sure. All I know is we have set up a time frame and I intend to see it through. I am using the time to get stronger so I am in a position to move to plan B. A month later. I feel like tonight or tomorrow will be the day to finally set my boundary. I might wait until next week, kids keep us super busy, but no more excuses, but I feel I'm ready to do it now. She has her IC tomorrow and we have date night on Friday. I figure we can spend date night figuring out the conditions of our separation or the conditions of our reconciliation. Her choice. I plan on setting a clear boundary. I will not be married to a woman who has a boyfriend. I will not share my wife with another man. If she cannot commit to a no-contact agreement with the arm, then she has to move out and I will file for divorce. I will give her until Friday night to decide. That way she can talk it through with her IC. The way I look at that, her IC is convinced I have abandonment issues, which I do, so I believe that's why she allows her to continue this affair. If the IC and my wife see that despite my abandonment issues, I'm ready to face them head on, they may change their tune. No matter what she decides, this is for me. I just want to time it so she can work out her answer in her IC session. I do plan on letting her know I will support her if she chooses to remain with me. I know if she will be experiencing a significant loss, and while I resent that, she will need reassurance that I can support her and I won't abandon her. In addition, there is no pressure to work on our marriage yet. His choice alone is a huge step towards reconciliation. Once she moves out of her grief phase, we can move into repairing the marriage. One more quick question. She has this vision of us continuing to be best friends after divorce. Spending time together with the kids, vacationing together, etc. I'm very forward-thinking and this sounds interest, but I don't think it's realistic. My parents had an awful divorce, but I know how to avoid that and remain friendly. But BFF, that seems like too much. For one I'm not sure I can handle being around her in that situation. Maybe in time, when I'm stronger I can better handle it, but from here I feel like we'll just reopen the scars. In addition, the bigger reason is how it will impact the kids. From what I understand, having these family times together just confuses them. Makes them relive the divorce over and over again. I don't want to perpetuate their pain. I know my wife views us as living as friends the last few years of our marriage so this seems reasonable to her, but is this really a realistic idea? I feel like I need to hit her with a dose of reality, but maybe I'm being too harsh of her view of divorce. I have not exposed them. He is separated, awaiting divorce. At this point, it wouldn't make much sense. Her friends already know, and to be honest, while they initially felt bad for me and couldn't support her, they are now doing the same crap in their marriages. Madness is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. Everyone around us is going crazy. I have no reason to believe my WS, but in some cases I do trust her. The POSOM is divorcing his wife and I do believe she is crazy from the stuff my WS has talked about. 1. I don't want any negative attention to put on my family. The woman comes from a gun-owning family. And 2. They own their own business and she takes care of the finances. Before she came around to the idea of divorce, she told him she had cooked the books and would try to use that against him since he signed everything. He has a lawyer and is in the clear, but again, I don't want any part of this craziness. I want to steer clear of the people. I have no reason to doubt any of this. It is all too crazy to be anything but true. It's over. She chose divorce. I did really good for the first part of the confrontation. 
set my boundary, stayed calm and clear. All she could say was I'm not moving out. I'm not abandoning my kids. Because she's so available right now, she really didn't have much to say. She continues to insist this is about our marriage and not the E. She is too afraid to enter back into the marriage, fearing that she will become that person she doesn't like again. I understand this. It's the toxic dance we have played for a long time. My passivity played a big role in that, but she doesn't accept that I'm committed to change. Doesn't want to take a leap of faith and see if we can be better. From there I should have walked away, but that's where I blew it. Now I just seem like the blabbering, pleading husband again. Any respect I gained initially is gone. I screwed it up, but in reality, I didn't have much of a chance either. The sad thing is I can tell she's not done with me. I can feel it in her tone. Maybe it's just sadness and tears over a dead marriage, but I feel part of her wants us to be okay and she can't overcome her fears. Maybe I'm just seeing what I want to see and I need to move on. In her eyes, she has been trying to save our marriage. She's been living her life, trying to be a better mom and person, hoping that she will feel something for me again. I bluntly said, how can you when he has taken over that place in your heart? She still doesn't see that. So, where do I go from here? Filing for divorce is obvious. I have to follow through on that. But who moves out? She refuses to. I'm a mess, regretting even trying, but I know something had to change. I couldn't live like that any longer. Tomorrow is a new day. Already told her to move out. She refuses. Already told her we won't be friends for the sake of the kids. I will be calling a lawyer today. No backing down from my boundary. I may be crumbling emotionally, but I will not back down. I need to do a 180 and incorporate marriage builder's plan B at this point. This will help me move on. Especially if we decide to cohabitate due to neither of us wanting to leave the house. I need find new supports or shift my focus more to my existing supports. I'm not sure how to pull this off while cohabitating, but I'm going to do my best. Any thoughts, strategies for the 180 while cohabituating? I really, truly believe her that it isn't physical, at least not full-on physical, today. Might have gone there in the past, I know I have no reason to believe her. She has lied to me and betrayed me, but I sense that she is honest about everything they are doing. For example, little things like her coming home from volleyball in her dirty clothes. This is a woman that would always shower before bonding if she was the least bit dirty. I can't imagine her changing that behavior now. Really, at this point it doesn't even matter. I've been doing the 180 for a day or so, and I feel like she just thinks I'm angry at her. Is that to be expected? Does that fade? Planet calls for exposure, which I'm not comfortable with. Is Planet a better option or will she think I'm just exposing it out of anger? I would do both, but I see some things that are in contention with each other. Like talking about, not talking about the good points of the marriage and supporting, not supporting the WS's emotional needs. Maybe I missed my shot at Planet and 180 is my only option. Plan B won't work because neither of us want to move out. She agreed to divorce, but I may only pursue legal separation. Still not sure. Lawyer hasn't called me back yet. But whatever, we had one more talk and it was horrible. She truly feels we are incompatible. I can't be the partner she needs and she can't, doesn't want to be, the partner I need. Of course, I said I can learn to support her the way she needs, think love languages, self-improvement, but she doesn't agree. She also hates passivity, something I struggle with and I'm trying to fix. She hates who she becomes with me. Not news. Additionally, and I'm summarizing, I think the only reason she hasn't divorced me is because I'm so attached to her. As a nice guy, I have up my entire support system for her and alienated my family. I have no supports outside of her. I think it was too hard for her to leave me. Maybe she rationalized the pain of an affair is easier than the pain of divorce. I don't know. My words, not hers. Anyway, this may or may not be fog talk, but I heard a lot of this before the affair. I have no idea. I'm implementing the 180 for me as a way to detach from her. I do want to give my marriage a chance which is why I was asking about plan A. So, I'm even more confused now. The plan is to stick with the 180, but I'm gaining more insight into the breakdown of my marriage. My wife is emotionally needy, more so than the average person. I'm emotionally unavailable, more so than the average person. There's a pattern of her going outside our marriage for emotional support. I won't go into too much detail, but there have been at least two other emotional connections outside the marriage, both female, but one physical, and I have let it happen. Didn't stand up and say, I'm your husband. I'm consistently letting her down as a partner. Not that she is without blame. She expects me to intuitively know how to support her. She doesn't know how to explain what she needs. Leaves me at a loss as I am someone that follows directions very well. But sometimes I have problems forming my own thoughts. Yes, this is probably a symptom of my NG issues. She claims to be telling me but I must be very dense. With all that said, I feel like while this affair is probably worse than I know, I do know that our marriage is a mess. The affair is just a symptom of a bigger problem. Is treating the symptom really going to cure the underlying disease? No, and I think that's where she are at mentally. Done trying. Sees our marriage as a failure. Of course, here I sit, refusing to throw in the towel. Too dumb to see that the game is over. Sure, I'm doing the 180 for me. I need to detach. Disconnect the emotional hose if I have any hope of finding myself. But I refuse to wave the white flag. 
My ultimatum didn't get the intended result. I'm okay with that, but I still feel like I have a chance. Thing is, I don't know what that is. So, the 180 is great for me, but makes her feel like she's been emotionally abandoned by me again. Blowing up the affair with exposure just pisses her off and pushes her even closer to divorce because to her, the marriage is lost and the affair wasn't the problem. Perhaps it's fog talk, but we have been here before. I have not been there for her emotionally for a long time. If ever. Really just rambling at this point. I'm not sure if I have actually asked a question yet. I guess I just want to know what plan would give me the best chance of success. Even if my chances are 1%, which is better for my situation. A broken down marriage where the wife feels neglected and doesn't think the husband can ever meet her huge emotional needs. FYI, not sure this matters, but she has been a wreck today. I haven't held strong to the 180 allowing emotional and marriage talk to happen, but it felt productive so I participated. She admitted she was stupid to think we could still be friends. She was even crying when I left the house tonight for me time. I'm horrible at reading people, but I think she's just sad that it's over. I'd like to think it's remorse or second guessing, but my gut says it's just pain about how our marriage has failed. Pretty much I know my marriage is over. So, do I want to try one last ditch effort that may piss my STBXW off more or go away quietly like the passive fool I have been our whole relationship? I'll start gathering the exposure list. I may not go through with it, but at least I'll have done the research. I assume all cheaters say the same thing. The marriage is unrepairable. I truly believe my wife feels this way, but I can't let go. I'm doing the 180 for my sanity, but deep down I still want to fight for my marriage. I know I have been going about it all wrong from the beginning. Too afraid to take everyone's good advice. As a nice guy, I have lived my whole life in fear. Paralyzed by my own over-analysis. It's not a good way to go about life. Anyway, what do I have to lose by exposing them? My marriage is already lost. Divorce is moving forward. I guess this time my fear is that there is a sliver of hope she wants to reconcile somewhere down the line and exposure just erases any hope of that. I'm so torn as to what to do. I hear what everyone is saying, I'm just paralyzed. I have been the whole time. I've had several opportunities to deal with this. It has gone on six months now. I even had opportunities before it happened. I have to stop playing it safe because that has only made it worse. I guess I feel like my only chance was to expose sooner and it's too late. Move on. Like I said, I'm gathering the necessary information for an exposure flood. Phone numbers, emails, etc. will probably take a week or so, but that will give me time to muster up the courage to just do it. Do I write a letter explaining what's happening or just make it simple? Sounds like I should have divorce papers ready as well. Overwhelmed by everything. I know I can research this, but do they take long to prepare? Do I need a lawyer, really can't afford one and would prefer mediation? Man, she is frustrating. Just got off the phone with her. Asking me if I was going to try and make her out to be an unfit mother and attack her in court. Inside my brain, no need honey, you are doing a fine job of that yourself. Out until 3 a.m. last night, 6 a.m. Friday night. Of course, I said no. I come from a divorced family and it was a nightmare. I want this to be quick and amicable for my kids. I don't want them to see us constantly fighting. It was hell. She talks about mutual respect we have and I stop her, reminding her she has no respect for me. Grant. I don't deserve it acting like a wuss. So, she turns it around on me and says all those years I was using excuses, procrastination, and ignoring her pleas to get help for myself, to be there for her, that I was disrespecting her. She is so convinced the pain she experiences through marriage is as great as the pain I'm experiencing now. While I don't disagree, I don't know the pain she was experiencing. I won't let her blame shift like this. Drives me crazy, but sitting her at my desk at work, there's only so much I could have said. I almost asked her to call me back on my cell phone so we could get into it but I just figured at this point, I need to just validate and detach. Her and I both fear reconciliation. I fear that I will not be enough emotional support for her and I should just move on to a normal person. Someone who appreciates the way I work, the irony is during this process, I have awakened emotionally. I now know empathy and validation. I am a whole new person emotionally. So yes, somewhere in the back of my mind I do fear reconciliation and she does too. But most of my inaction is based in fear. Fear of her reactions. I live my life in fear to the point where I don't even know what I want anymore. This is what brought me to the nice guy book. My overall indifference towards life. I think I have stated this before, but she doesn't want to go back to being the monster she is with me. I get that. She is afraid. I think somewhere in her heart or mind she doesn't want us to work, but she is done trying because it hurts too much. But maybe she will be okay without me and we really are incompatible. Thing is, neither of us knows the answer. I was hoping marriage counseling would help us either fix this or end this. In an indirect way, our first round of MC did just that. She checked out when I didn't improve. I was still passive. An example she likes to bring up is that when trying to motivate me to seek I see, the MC said, if I put a $100 bill on the table and say it's yours if you schedule a session, will you do it? I was stupid and honest. I said I don't know. I want to, but I don't trust myself to do it. 
What I should have said was hell yes, give me the damn phone and 100 bucks and I'll do it right here in the middle of our frigging session. This is how I feel now and it's how I've been behaving more often. Something comes up, I take care of it right away. No more procrastinating. With all that said, I don't care. I want to fight for my wife. I'm not ready to give up. She needs to choose to overcome her fears, like I am. We have reversed roles. She was confident and assertive, but she is just passive these days. She would have dragged this on forever. I'm trying not to engage in arguments, but last night she was in a foul mood and I couldn't walk away or shut up. I should have, I'm just too stupid sometimes. Anyway, I suck at arguing so I'm wondering if any of you have any advice for when she pulls this one me. I know I shouldn't engage, but just in case. Basically, I blame her for the infidelity and tell her how hurt I am and she turns around and blames me for all the hurt she felt during the marriage. All the years she begged me to change and I did nothing. All those years she was fighting to save the marriage and I sat back passively not working at all to change. I see that. I know I f up. I can't apologize enough. I know her pain was awful, but she still goes there every time we fight and I have nothing to come back with. I know I shouldn't even engage in these arguments, but they are the kinds of moments I draw a blank. Frozen in my nice guy shame. It sucks. Anyway, I took some me time last night, hung out with an old friend, and didn't get in until 3 a.m. I do see how time can fly, but I won't tell her that. Felt good hanging out with someone. She texted me some crap about her having to get used to what I've been getting used to. Watching me go out and hoping I'm safe. I texted back, almost the same thing. Just add an utter betrayal, heart-ripping pain, and mind movies and you will almost understand my pain. Didn't ruin my night. Looking forward to spending more time with friends and family. Let her worry about my safety. Saw our first divorce mediator today. As is usually the case, I liked them and she didn't. Hopefully tonight's is awful so she just goes with the lesser of two evils. The bigger story is that she is done with this marriage. No doubt in her mind. Certainly, we were both super emotional, sad, but she would sign the papers yesterday. I have to remember this and continue to move on. I'm still going through with tomorrow's plans. I just hope it doesn't upset the mediation process. Once she detached from the marriage, the criticism went down considerably. I think this is why she feels she needs to leave me. She doesn't want to go back to the older that was always angry and critical. She fears that if she lets me back in, this person will reappear. So, while I have been a much better communicator, she is now removed and dare I say, passive. That is the sad irony of my situation. Now that I'm more present, she is gone and is too afraid to take a leap of faith and let me back in. I agree that we created this environment where she was the aggressor and I withdrew out of fear. I believe our anxiety presented itself differently. She would control and I would withdraw. This was our toxic dance. Neither of us was equipped to handle the other. I guess this is where I always though MC could help us. Unfortunately, her therapists are just telling her to cut me loose if she isn't fulfilled. I think she's kidding herself. I don't feel a magical new relationship is going to make her less anxious. Just new stressors. Different ones. I feel like she's throwing away this marriage for a shot at something better when we have an equal shot at something better. My comment. She betrayed you. Totally different game. R cannot happen without remorse, very contrite remorse. Stop holding on to a dream that has become a nightmare. She's gone. Sorry to be harsh but pull your head out of your bottom. Not meeting her emotional needs, not being a perfect man, not knowing exactly the right thing to do is in a completely different league from infidelity. You could have worked through those issues together, but instead she went outside of the marriage. You are not going to heal from this until you pull your focus from her and put it on yourself. Really, a lesson of what not to do.